You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible, folks. Friday, the NAACP announced that its support for Byron Allen in his discrimination case against Comcast. In a statement the NAACP released said, quote, Comcast, the second largest broadcasting and cable television company in the world, is poised to take an unprecedented step because of a dispute with a black businessman. The company has urged the Supreme Court to roll back the crucial protections of one of the nation's oldest civil rights laws, Section 1981 of the Civil Rights Act of 1866. We urge Comcast to cease its attack on Section 1981 of the Civil Rights Act of 1866, a bedrock civil rights statute that has been in place for more than 150 years. Now, the Supreme Court is going to hear this case on November 13th. What's really interesting here, Derek, <laughs> is that when um, Byron Allen sued in his lawsuit, uh, he actually blasted the NAACP the National Urban League, Reverend, Sh Reverend Sharpton's National Action mm -hmm. Network, uh, saying that essentially Comcast used them essentially as fronts or props to help them advance their interest. Uh, and what, what he has been doing is he has been trying to get different black organizations to stand with him uh, in this. Uh, Comcast actually released a statement as well. I'm going to pull it up in a second. Uh, but but it, it's interesting because he has been on this aggressive stand trying to get more black organizations to stand with him. People were saying, okay, why are they scared? Right. Critics of him saying, well, hell, have you been standing with black people? So it's been really interesting watching this whole thing play out. He owns the Griot now and has been using the Griot right number a number of these stories as well. Just your thoughts about all of this. And I was, I looked at it all and I was wondering, just, you and I both came, worked at TV One, Radio One. And so I was wondering, Roland, is it the content could it be the content at all? Why this? Why they haven't picked them up? Or is it really a racial issue? Well, he, he's alleging he's alleging that uh, being a 100% black-owned company, that he has been denied an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when he initially made this lawsuit, uh, Avis, he included Charter and some others, mm -hmm. AT&T as well. They settled. Mm -hmm. Right. They placed his various networks on their systems. Right. What Comcast essentially is saying is, oh, you're just trying to force us to place your networks on our system. Comcast, in their response, said, well, we've launched different uh, black-focused mm -hmm. networks, minority-focused networks, mm -hmm. and so how is it that we've launched these but we're somehow denying you? That's their uh, response to it. Yeah, I mean... It... You know, this is, this is, I still, I want to see black businesses thrive. Let me just say that, first and foremost. And I hope that he's able to get his content placed on Comcast. We don't have enough representation. I'm glad Comcast has done what, he's, what it's done. But as far as I'm concerned, black people are the top viewers of television. If you look at yeah. all the demographics in this nation, we are more likely to watch television than anyone else. So just because you've um, included some representation on your platform doesn't mean that it's enough, and it doesn't mean that we wouldn't be hungry for more if we had more options to choose from. Now, what's also interesting here, Julian, uh, is that the, the Los Angeles Area Urban League uh, four weeks ago uh, released uh, a statement uh, saying that that would be economic uh, reprisals or boycotts of Comcast in this case. <laughs> okay, now, but 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 let me let me let me further unpack that. Uh, I saw a story over the weekend where the National Urban League knocked them back, saying yeah, you don't make those decisions as a chapter. Now, earlier this year. Byron Allen was awarded an award by the Los Angeles Area Urban League. Uh, and what's also interesting is that David Cohen, mm -hmm. a top executive with Comcast, on sits League on board. the National Urban League board. Mm -hmm. So there's all this interlocking stuff yeah. that is difficult to unpack in terms of the fact... First of all, does Byron Allen... And I'm just playing devil... Do you have the right to have access to Comcast? Do you simply have that right? because you are offering content up. I mean, I'd like to see his stuff on, on Comcast, but none of us know what the intricacies of these deals are, what he's done. I know he's ticked a lot of people off, and I'm not making any excuses or anything. I'm just saying, 
does he have the right? This is a business kind of question. It's not a civil rights question. That they would go after it. My problem with Comcast is that they go after it from a civil rights perspective is problematic. But do if, if Roland, you I say, Roland, you say, I don't want you to be a panelist no more. Can I sue you because of age discrimination or something like that? No, you just don't want me to be a panelist no more. But in fact, that's, <laughs> isn't it Byron Allen? He's the one that's going at it from a civil rights perspective. Right. Well, so, so, saying... so the basis of his lawsuit is that Comcast is violating the Civil Rights Act of 1866 mm -hmm. by denying him an opportunity, and he says it's based upon race. And... As, as, as he said, 100% African-American owned. Well, he's asserting that these other networks are not 100% African-American no, owned. right about that. Well, you know, he, he's done a great job with his brand and his work, and I salute that. But I'm also looking at this from a, a different perspective and sort of saying, hmm... I'm not so sure. And then the third piece of it is, as I said, the interlocking piece. The L.A. Urban League supports him. The National Urban League does not, or certainly uh, is saying, you know, with Cohen on their board, what can they do? And you, you have a lot of uh, white folks and black folks Kool-Aid, which makes some black folks step back. So I, I support him. Per personally, I support him, but I also think that the way that this case has been moved forward has a lot of... My sister has a word if called Catawampus. And it'd Catawampus means that they like, all right. They'd be like, yo, we right. want you. You know? It, I, I'm with well, you. Well, I don't I think it's his, con his content's okay. okay. I think that he <laughs> may have been... Um, too vocal? No, not even too vocal. If I don't like you, man, I ain't gonna do business with you. Right. Yeah, if I don't like you, I ain't gonna do business with you. Mm. Period. In the conversation. That, that, that may be a piece... I think that's a piece of it. It I just put that be. out there. It definitely could be. But the elephant in the room, and I think this is probably what he's raising in his suit, and we'll, we're see, we'll see what happens as a result of uh, the NAACP, get, NAACP getting involved. But the elephant in the room is that um, major corporations like Comcast, for example, uh, fund a lot of our organizations, yeah. fund a lot of our legacy organizations, so our organizations that you would think would be on the side of a 100% black-owned business Maybe they're a little bit quieter because there is a check that they are expecting to come and they need well, to keep their organizations open. Now, let me, let me just say um, that is a reality that we have to face as a black community, the, but it's also a no reality that we have to face in terms no of position. our responsibility to fund our own organizations and, as you often say, our own politics. Because the reality of the situation is that if we as a people did a better job of funding our own organizations, they would not have to rely on these corporate dollars. And therefore, they would have more ability to be free in doing what they wanted to do around various situations as they arise. So while we can chastise these organizations for doing what they have to do to keep their doors open, if, in fact, that's what's happening here, we also have to cast a mirror to say, what is our responsibility to be able to fund these organizations so they can stand up for what's right no matter who is involved, no matter what big you know, you know well-funded entity might have an interest in the issue. Derek Johnson was at a meeting that I attended uh, over the weekend, and he was... He talked about um, the fact that if membership... If people paid their little $30 dues, if a half a million people paid their $30 dues, <laughs> how many million dollars would NAACP have? They could fund their operating budget. Right. They could take independent positions. I mean, at the moment, they're basically shackled... 15 million dollars. By, they're shackled by the fact that people don't, you know, people paid their NAACP dues 20 years ago, and they'll still tell you they're a member of the NAACP. <laughs> and they paid it one time 20 years ago, but they're still a member of the NAACP. So that's a really big piece of it, yeah. Avis, as you say, is, is how can we fund our own stuff? And we have $1.3 <clears throat> trillion. Dollars. Well, we yes. that $1.3 trillion. <laughs> Roland goes on the air and says, fund the fake... Well, what are the fun... Bring the Funk Fan Club. <laughs> Bring the Funk Fan Club. <laughs> Try and get 20,000 people to give an average of 50 bucks, which completely funds the show, and we've gotten 3,000. And, and, and y'all watch. Wow. Y'all watch, y'all comment, y'all talk spit, y'all talk back, but you don't, you know, you don't fund. And that, that's wrong. That happens with all of our stuff. Yeah. We so, like, know right now, there are 1,004 people watching on YouTube. And there are... There are... Let's see here... Let me see you go over pop, pop over to Facebook. Keep talking. But how many of them are members? So these are really really legitimate questions. Three hundred and twenty on Facebook, but hundred about fifteen hundred total watching right now. And and and, and yeah, I mean, yeah, that, yeah. that will that will uh that's 
if each one of the people right now says, I give, we go from 3,000 to 4,500. But yeah, and that's what it boils down to. And and it's, so the thing here is, so also let's be clear, y'all. So, uh, now, Byer Allen, I'm going to need you to come on here. <laughs> right. When I launched this show, I called Byron Allen two or three times. Mm -hmm. And then get a phone call back. Mm. So I'm, I, okay. I call. I call. Uh, so for all y'all, I, I love the people out there that's about, oh, Roland, you start talking about this story. No, no, no. Roland called last year. Didn't get a phone call back. And it's also important to not just want black support, but come talk to black people. Yes. And, and so, and, for to be and again, and I, and I appreciate, and I look, I got to see the Grio, but if y'all just, just, just so you understand, and it's not, and again, just understand, it ain't hating, it's stating. Mm. Okay, the Grio's got thirteen hundred YouTube subscribers on their channel. Mm. I'm just stating. <laughs> we got three hundred seventy-six thousand. Hate, not hate. 100 million views saying. last year. Like so, <laughs> so the point is, that's the other piece as well. Right. Is that also coming, if you want to, if you want to speak to these issues, come talk to black folks as well. Right. And so I would love to have Byron Allen come on this show and share with our audience why they must stand, stand behind him and support him as well mm -hmm. and be able to, uh, to get these questions. Uh, we, gonna, we reached out to the National Urban League uh, to get their thoughts and response as well to all of this here. These are all stories that we covered. But, but let me go ahead and, and say this while I'm here. Because this is kind of important. And why it matters and it depends upon what you support. I keep telling y'all, it's a whole bunch of people out there calling themselves black media. <laughs> and some say they knew black media. Others say they owe black media. But if all you doing is rewriting what a white journalist wrote and commenting on what somebody else wrote, you ain't real media. Now, y'all heard me say, see, this is what I need y'all to understand. I'm a journalist. This is what I went to school for. This is what my degree is in. This is what the high school I went to. This is what I have done since I was 14 years old. I'll be 51 in November. This is all I've done. Other people call themselves journalists and they're not. I believe you need to learn how to pick the phone up and call people. So when Roland says, I personally called Byron Allen to talk about this story. I did. I can pull the logs. <laughs> I told y'all that this morning, I text message the Alpha president and the AK president and the Delta president after Kristen Clark was on Tom Jordan the Morning Show. The Alpha president hit me back. The AK president hit me back. They're interested. I just told y'all, while Julianne and Avis and Derek were talking, who I was going to text, uh, who I was going to text. Um, I can just read for y'all. Let's see here. Who did I text? <laughs> I text, see again, though, real journalist. I text Derek Johnson, NAACP, Sharpton National Action Network, Mark Morial, National Urban League, Rashad Robinson, Color of Change, Melanie Kemmel, Black Women's Roundtable, also text Reverend Jesse Jackson Sr. and Susan Taylor. And this is what I said. When is the mass mobilization to put pressure on Maryland to give a real settlement in this HBCU case? I've been calling the Divine Nine all day. Hogan and the Maryland legislature needs that public pressure. Robert Smith likes the idea of a day of action and protest to target them. We text today. That's the richest black person in, in America, y'all, Robert Smith. Yeah, we text today, too. Uh, I also told Tom Jordan we need black radio championing this. These schools should be getting a billion bucks. They have asked for $577 million. Hogan is offering $200 million over 10 years. Sharpton, I'm in. Mark Moriel, count us in. Rashad Robinson, happy to jump in. I'd love to get something to engage color change members, maybe coming from someone on this list. Mm -hmm. See, real journalists make phone calls. Last week, I had to hit a couple of black entities who wrote stories about Tamika Mallory and Bob Bland and Linda Sarsour resigning from the Women's March Board of Directors. The story was written by the Washington Post. The Washington Post essentially said that they were being forced out under pressure when, in fact, their terms, the two-year terms, were up. I've known since last year their terms were up. 
A couple of black outlets rewrote the Washington mm -hmm. Post story, sent it out to their members, and gave the impression that it was true. I had to email the CEO of each one of those companies to say, this story is wrong. Why am I saying that? Because if anybody out there is calling themselves real black media, and they're calling themselves uh, speaking for you, if all they're doing is just wah, 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 and not actually interviewing Kristen Clark and her organization who's leading the lawsuit, not actually talking to people who are involved in these cases, all they're doing is just commenting. They're not actually reporting a damn thing. And so it's real easy to read the New York Post and to read somebody else's story in the Washington Post, the New York Times, they come on and say, hey, here's, what, here's what's going on, as opposed to learn how to pick the phone up. Because see, today I text Anthony Brown, Congressman from Maryland, who was the, who was the lieutenant governor, to say, why in the hell was there not a bill that was actually introduced mm. in Maryland? See, that's what journalists do, okay? They actually reach out to people. So I'm saying all of that is that when you're supporting black media, see if they're actually reporting on something. These people out here who say they're black media, and let me be real clear, I'm not talking about people who say they're in new black media and old black media, because there's a bunch of sorry-ass black newspapers who don't show up to a damn thing and all they want are advertising dollars but they don't cover Jack. Yeah, today is roll call day. Whoops. I had a good damn weekend. I got a good night's rest. <laughs> and I'm checking lots of people today. <laughs> so I need y'all to understand, <laughs> I take this shit personal. Because this is what I do. I'm sick and tired of black people wanting to come on television and play journalist. Play journalist. Stan Holly Inn Express don't make you a journalist, okay? <laughs> Everybody and their mama is like right now. Everybody want to be a DJ. Like, damn it, that's a craft. Work at the craft. Everybody want to be on television commenting on stories, but they can't call nobody. They can't reach out to anybody. Presidential candidates, I text several of them directly. Mm -hmm. Not a senior aide, directly. And so, if we're going to talk about black media and where we go, then we need to be supporting those who actually are doing the work and trying to get the results. So that's one of the reasons why we need you to support this show, other black outlets that do so, because at the end of the day, when everybody else is out there reporting and all we're doing is commenting on what they report, mm -hmm. we're just parroting what, parroting what they wrote. Mm -hmm. And if we're repeating what they wrote and what they wrote is not really what happened, and all we got to do is pick the damn phone up and call the black person who was involved? How hard is that? How hard is it? That's all I'm saying what we got to do. I need us to do it. So, uh, we're going to try to get Derek Johnson on here, talk about the Byron Allen case. Byron Allen, I would love for you to come on the show. Supreme Court not going to hear the case on November 13th. Today is September 30th. We got a month and a half to come on the show. More than welcome to have you on the show. All right, folks, back to that roadmark unfiltered video in just one moment. Oh, right, you heard me talk a lot about MarijuanaStock.org. Why? Because I want to keep you informed of investment opportunities that make sense. We've all watched the growth of the cannabis industry. A recent report by New Frontier Data estimates the global cannabis market at more than $340 billion. And we know that marijuana legalization is sweeping the country state by state. We also know that marijuana has a good cousin, the hemp plant, with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the U.S. and heavily regulated by the DEA. That all changed with the 2018 Farm Bill, now making it legal to grow hemp CBD. What do they need? Land. And this is where our folks at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports, supports hemp CBD grow operations and leads it to licensed high paying tenants. That's right, they are hemp CBD landlords and you can get in on the action. Now what they've done is something special for the Roland Martin Unfiltered family. You can invest as little as 200 bucks in this crowdfunding campaign. Originally, the minimum investment was 500 bucks, but you can invest as little as 200 up to $10,000. Again, this is a $340 billion industry that is still growing. You can participate with as little as 200 bucks. To invest, go to MarijuanaStock.org, MarijuanaStock.org. Get in the game and get in the game now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.